I didn't know that they were part of a, a scheme team that uh, actually wanted to scam me out of the house. Right now, your home could be in jeopardy too. It's a crime that's almost impossible to prevent, and victims spend a lot of time and money proving their homes really do belong to them. So can a thief steal your house? In a way, yes, they can. Karen Drew has been investigating, and she's picking up the story for us on a block where this has happened. And the big concern is it happens all the time. It does, and it's done with a simple document causing a whole lot of problems. Take a look at this. It's called a quit claim deed, and it transfers property from one owner to another. It's notarized, filed with the county, but one guy says this deed is a dirty deed and someone was trying to swindle his property. She sent me a text and a voicemail. The text messages came from somebody Daryl Sherman never met. We are planning to sell the house, the texter said. His house. She claimed to have purchased the house. But the house on Santa Clara Street in Detroit had been in the family for more than 50 years. Daryl Sherman's late mother-in-law, Marjorie Taylor, bought the house back in 1970. She never spoke of selling it. Marjorie died in 2010 and left the house to her family. A renter was living there, and then about a year ago, Sherman started getting some strange phone calls and text messages about his house. My house, her house. I'm going to get an attorney and sue you. Daryl Sherman's case isn't unique. People have suddenly gotten a knock on the door and been told, um, you don't own the house. Sherman's attorney, Gilbert Borman, has seen this type of scam so many times. Somebody concocted a fraudulent deed and recorded it, and now they're trying to evict the actual owner. Okay, let's take a closer look at this deed for Daryl Sherman's house. It's called a quick claim deed. You can see in 2010, the same year Marjorie Taylor died, you can see her signature right there, she gave all of her rights away to the home, legal ownership, for $30,000. You can see here, the deed was drafted and notarized. And right here, the notary stamped the deed and wrote that her commission expires in 2015. But there's a glaring problem here. We checked with the state. That notary's commission expired in 2006. And should not have been stamping any papers in 2010. Now, the county keeps track of the 900,000 plus properties in the county, but here's the problem. Sometimes people file fake deeds or dirty deeds. It's such a common problem that one time someone actually tried to file one of those fake deeds with one of the clerks, and the clerk actually owned the home. And uh, the attendant taking the document said, okay, I'll be right with you. Walked 10 feet away and came and said, Kasha, this, is this guy buying your house from you, is that your signature? Said so that is my house, that's my address, that's not my signature. Bernie Youngblood is in charge of the Wayne County Property Deeds Database. Youngblood says dirty deeds are a problem in every county in the country, but in Wayne County, one city has been especially targeted. I think the majority, if we were to take a look, has all been in Detroit. The problem of title fraud is so common, Wayne County set up a special task force to deal with it. And so far, the task force helped return 400 Detroit homes to the rightful owners. Fake deeds get into the system in the first place because by law, if a deed looks legit, it has to be registered by the county. These are not trained real estate attorneys. And for now, if a title fraud victim wants their home back quickly, the process is difficult. They'll have to contact an attorney and go through uh, the court system to clear that title to prove that the property has been stolen from them. I would estimate it read about $20,000. Daryl Sherman says proving to a judge that his house is really his was a long, expensive headache. And the house was damaged by his renter, who he says was in on the plan to steal the home. The washer and dryer was taken. Refrigerator was taken. To them, it's easy money, and um, they don't want to work. But you don't have to victimize people. So Daryl Sherman did get his house back through the civil court. The case is under investigation right now by the county. 
So on clickondetroit.com, we do have some answers for some of the questions you may ask about who could be targeted. Also, we've got links for fraud monitoring. And then tomorrow at 7 a.m. on Local 4 Plus, Bernie Youngblood, the Wayne County Register of Deeds, he's going to join us live. And we'll be talking about his push to make it easier for counties to actually get people charged with a crime for this. He is frustrated. Homeowners are frustrated and something obviously needs to be done because this keeps happening. I can only imagine the magnitude of frustration, especially when you have to come out like that guy said 20 plus thousand know, dollars Sherman, just to prove that it's your house. I know. You're just trying to plug away and pay your own bills and now you have this pain and, and again and to find out you're not the only one that this is happening yeah. to. So uh, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning on uh, Local 4 Plus make sure to join us and also click on because there's some really good yeah. benefit stuff that we can help with the viewers just to kind of keep themselves protected. Yeah.